Hey everybody! So, today I have a project that is not a quilt, but it is fabric. It is very faded. At the time that I made this, it's a little garden flag. So at the time that I made this, I knew it was going to be faded because I was going to put it outside in my garden and it lasted a season and it was very pretty for that season. But now, of course, it's extremely faded and I don't want to put it out again this year. But I kind of do. So the thread for the applique is mostly still fine. The stitching on the flag is still fine. It's just that it was extremely faded from the sun, which I knew it was going to do. Um, and so I thought, rather than tossing it, I thought I'm going to try a little something something here to see if I can't kind of restore it and or change it maybe to make it even more colorful than it originally was. So I think we're gonna try that now. So I've got a couple different options. I'm thinking I'm gonna start with some fa fabric dye and see if I can't kind of paint it almost with fabric dye. If that doesn't work, then I have some other options for actually using paint, actually using fabric paint maybe to do some puffy paint around the tulips themselves and the welcome, little welcome word, welcome sign, whatever we want to call it. Um, yeah, just wanted to kind of freshen this up and be able to use it in my garden again this year. So I'm going to let you guys see how this works out. And I hope that it works out. I hope you do see this video. <laughs> All right, so first thing is I have actually saved a bunch of aspirin bottles and some medication bottles, etc. I save them once in a while to be able to um, put paint, you know, mix different colors of paint, that sort of thing. And in this particular case, I've gone ahead and started by mixing up some fabric dye. And so I wouldn't encourage doing this on your kitchen countertops, but this is just my little hobby room here. So I am actually going to go ahead and just paint it right onto the countertop here. And I'm probably going to dye my countertop, but that's okay. It's, like I said, a little hobby room, a little paint room, little, you know, stained sink here. And yeah, it's just a little off of the, the attic space in my house. So I have a one and a half story. So the half story means that I have my attic spaces on the sides of the upstairs. So this just happens to be a little finished portion of it. Well, sort of finished. <laughs> Drywalled and painted a nice lime green. So, um, and some cabinets and kitchen sink and some things like that. So, but yeah, it's, um, always just been a little paint place so all right I'm gonna go ahead and get started on dyeing this and we'll see how it goes fingers crossed all right I am gonna start this little project off by just trying to dye the background that way I figure if I go into the letters or the flowers I can always um, continue with that next and die over top of it. So this is going to be kind of a long process here. In fact, I had even thought about just making a bowl full of the yellow dye and just dyeing the whole thing with yellow to begin with and then going through and kind of painting the letters and flowers. But we'll see how this works out. And we'll go from there. I know it's going to be pretty splotchy, but I feel okay about that. It was kind of a splotchy print to begin with, so... Yeah, I really am thinking maybe I should have just dyed the whole thing to begin with. And then gone back over the welcome in a darker color. 
but we'll see. All right, I'm probably gonna skip ahead. So far, I would say we have quite the watercolor look here. And I'm just going to paint this stem to match. Or dye it, I should say. I was thinking those leaves would turn out a little bit darker because I used a slightly different green, but I think they're going to be the same. So. Yeah, like I said, so far we're going to have probably a watercolor technique to it. So we'll see when it dries. <laughs> <laughs> 